are these people? I brought this because I did not know. I didn't really hear much about this. Now, I had heard about Baltimore. UPS to close facilities in Portland and Baltimore, threatening thousands of jobs. And this is Tom Hall from, again, the World Socialist website. I brought two of their articles. And I have to say this year, their coverage on certain topics has been fantastic, whereas on others, I'm not such a big fan, but they're winning me over. And they're the only people talking from this perspective that I can find consistently on a regular basis. And I got to give them a lot of credit for that. Mm. They're talking about rank and file problems and they're talking to actual workers on a regular basis and they're finding out what are the actual problems. So what's happening in Baltimore, but now also in Portland, thanks to our wonderful friends at the Teamsters, uh huh. UPS is set to temporarily close two more of its hubs for retooling into automated facilities employing a fraction of the labor. Here comes the automation. The two facilities are its warehouses in Baltimore, Maryland, and the Swan Island facility in Portland, Oregon. All right. The Baltimore hub closure has already been widely reported and will affect approximately 540 workers when the facility closes at the end of this August. But the closure of Swan Island is being reported for the first time by World Socialist website on the basis of knowledgeable sources inside the building, Swan Island employs well over a thousand people. According to the source, Swan Island is expected to, to become fully automated as of quote unquote next year. Now, I don't know if everybody remembers or if, how many were watching here, but last year, Snow Hambo and I did a show called Nobody Wants to Work Anymore for about 15 episodes on INN. And it was when Snow first showed up here at the network. And we were kind of talking in DM threads about his looking for a job, my looking for a job. And it turned into talking about labor and talking about unions. And it was another summer of labor and a fall October. You know, it was like another strike Tober where you had the quote unquote, the stand up strike from General Motors. You had the, the writer strike and the actor strike that was happening simultaneously. There were a lot of people that were out of work. So we were talking about that. And mm. one of the things that we talked about also Just was the UPS. Thank you. UPS and the Teamsters. All right. Which were threatening. The Teamsters were threatening to strike all. I believe it was 330,000 UPS jobs at warehouses and drivers around the country. And mm. they were practicing marching. They were um, really getting loud, and UPS had walked away from the table, but the last week, a week before, they actually came back to the table, and for whatever reason, the Teamsters accepted the first offer that was brought to them by UPS rather than holding out and actually going through with a strike. And we said at the time, based upon what, and, and we did a massive criticism of the UPS agreement with the Teamsters, um, one of the things that it would not protect against is this specific thing, which is automation and cutting jobs. Um, they also didn't even get 10,000 part-timers converted to full-time, and there were more than 170,000 part-time workers. It didn't make any sense. It's just because UPS doesn't want to pay full-time benefits and give out full-time hours, and they're being cheap, while they pay out tens of millions of dollars to their executive board. It's gross as shit. Himbo will tell you. Just ask him. Anna Mayer says, I love that show. Nobody wants to work anymore. Bring it back. You know, we've been talking about doing something yeah. like that. At least Reef and I did. I haven't talked to Himbo about that, but Himbo is now doing two shows on the network. He's doing Snow Himbo Gaming on Saturday nights, and he's now joined Greg, uh, the Big Mad Crab, over at Politically Homeless on Thursday nights at 9 o'clock Eastern. So check that out. Um, Getting back to this, Right, that Swan Island is expected to become fully automated as of next year. Now, that could be the end of next year, but still, you're looking at 18 months out at most. The closures are part of an escalating assault on jobs as part of the company's network of the future. In a meeting earlier this year with top investors, UPS executives explained this restructuring program would 
aim to close 200 facilities and automate everything. This is on top of 12,000 mostly white-collar job cuts already announced this year. That's not good. The automation-driven cuts at UPS are part of a global jobs bloodbath by major corporations, and this is where I wanted to talk about what's happening in the general labor market. U.S.-based corporations alone have already announced around 1 million layoffs since the start of, late la since the start of last year, according to an outplacement firm, Challenger Gray and Christmas. God, is that like Lloyd Christmas? Christmas? Is that Lloyd Christmas from, from <laughs> Dumb and Dumber? I hope not. A separate, a separate I, I study. I hope so, honestly. Well, that would be cool to... God, could you imagine having your last name be Christmas? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry to go off on a tangent there, but that just kind of... Christmas. Christmas. I'm going to call you Christmas. No, no, not Christmas. Uh, <laughs> Come on. It's you, the, the Grinch who stole Christmas. I mean, there's so many things you could do with that name. A separate study yep. found that four in 10 business leaders expect artificial intelligence to be a major factor in layoffs in their industries this year. Forget the fact that they're making record profits, okay, and they're squeezing the fuck out of workers to begin with, and they're using this AI, quote unquote, as an excuse to further cut fat and make shit worse everywhere. Look fat. Instead of advances in labor-saving technologies to ease the burden of work and improve living conditions for the vast majority, under capitalism, they're being used to squeeze out every last ounce of profit from the working class. Huh, didn't I just say that? Uh -huh. The jobs of as much as 80% of US, UPS's inside workforce are threatened by the automation drive. According to one HR insider, well, it sounds like the packaging and shipping industry need... It's going to have a mass exodus. About 90% of the existing UPS facilities yeah! are... Fire! They're conventional. Um, uh, yeah. So, meaning that a single package might be touched by 10 people as it goes from truck to truck to truck. The loading, mm -hmm. sorting, bagging... Sorting for reload and physically loading a truck again are all done by union employees in a conventional building, so it's much slower and far more prone to error. So what do they want to do? They want to cut it down to two people touching a package versus ten. Unloading is done by hand. Okay, everything in between. Sorting, scanning, routing, etc. All done by computers. And finally, it's reloaded by hand. All right. Um, that's bad. New automated hubs employ only a fraction of the traditional workforce. The company's new Velocity Hub in Louisville, Kentucky, requires only 200 people to move 350,000 packages a day. Based on this, it's reasonable to assume that the Baltimore Hub will reopen with a workforce of a little more than 100 people, while Swan Island will reopen with a little more than 200. So they're going to cut 80% of the heads. Jesus. According to UPS itself, these layoffs are made possible by labor certainty provided by the new Teamsters contract with the bureaucracy rammed through its 340,000 members at UPS employing massive fraud, falsely claiming it represented a historic victory. Man, did I get into arguments uh -huh. with people about that that still are arguing with me and telling me that UPS drivers are now all making $170,000 a year and they want to go work there. Yeah, you go sit in a hot truck for three and a half hours oh, a day. shit. Here we go again. Yeah. Um, oh. Soon after the contract was ratified, UPS began laying off entire sort shifts at hubs around the country, including Swan Island and Baltimore. <laughs> what a surprise. The Teamsters yeah. still have not even acknowledged the job cuts or the network of the future. What a surprise there, too. Sean O'Brien's been silent. Earlier this year, he held a so-called webinar lasting only a few minutes, referring vaguely to a contract enforcement campaign, quote-unquote. In fact, the contract contains no provisions against facility closures for the use of technology to eliminate jobs. 
or the use of technology to eliminate jobs. The company is required only to give 45 days notice before such cuts are carried or carried out. And they're doing that. Yes, those trucks don't even have proper AC. So much for profits for upgrading USV, UPS vehicles. No, what they agreed to was only putting air conditioning in vehicles going forward January 1st of this year. And they agreed to put fans in all the existing vehicles. They did outfit and provide them with fans. When confronted, Which, yeah, that's, okay, first of all, I yeah. want you to go back and picture Ace Ventura, pet detective, when he's stuck in the rhino and he has that little fan he's got to tap while drowning in his own sweat. I want you to think about that, right? Like, <laughs> like that's, yeah, a fan. Thanks, guys. It's 110. Like, right? What? You're in a metal box. Yeah, a fan's super helpful. Thanks. When he was confronted at a local meeting in Portland earlier this year by a group of workers, a member of the national bargaining team blurted out that UPS had a right to lay off workers. Of course they do, because you didn't fight for them. Yeah. A source in Swan Island told you the World Social... Well, sure. I mean, he's also a member of the union. I don't know how greedy he is, per se, but they all Not made him. a deal. Yes. The company... Right. But yes, they're greedy dirtbags for sure. You know, again, it was the union, the pilots and the company management themselves that made this deal kind of behind the scenes and ba and came back to the table effectively to announce it without really telling anyone what it was going to be, then having them vote on it and railroading this thing through and telling all their district, their local captains, you better, you better push this through. We had one that said no, and man, did they get in trouble for that. They changed their tune and flipped it in a day. A source in Swan Island told the World Socialist website that the bureaucrats were well aware of the automation plans, but have not said anything to avoid a panic. In other words, that mo workers might mobilize independent of the sellout union officials to stop the layoffs, which they won't. They'll just start quitting and getting other jobs, and then UPS will have to either replace them or pay more money to get more people in, and they don't want to see a mass panic and a mass exodus until this plan is executed. They just want to keep these people on the hook, which is so fucked up. Meanwhile, at the, at the new Teamsters administration, all the injustice, hailed by pseudo left quarters as the leaders of a resurgent reform movement in the U.S. <laughs> trade unions. Uh huh. Uh. Thanks, Jonah Furman. Are openly courting. There's definitely an episode of the Justice League where there's a villains union. I guarantee you. You right. know, like right. that's definitely a thing. But the Teamsters um, are openly courting the extreme right now. This is where I disagree somewhat with World Socialist website. O'Brien has met numerous times with Donald Trump and is slated to speak at the Republican National Convention this month which will have the character of a fascist rally. Uh, uh -huh. Stop you know, politicizing your union you at know, all. How about you, that? How about you that? Were doing, you were that? doing great defending workers until then and keeping this apolitical. Now, the fact that O'Brien has requested to speak at both the RNC and the DNC conventions tells me that he wants the voice of workers to be heard across both sides of the corporate spectrum. And that is not a bad thing. I don't want to alienate him from going out and speaking to a Republican friendly audience and speaking on behalf of the Teamsters. I'd rather him do it than just about anybody else. I mean, I'd rather him. I'd rather him speak to workers. That's what I would rather him do. He, he does that every but, day. You know, what do I know? He does that every day, but mm. he's also been given a slot to speak Can't at do both that every day when you're meeting with politicians one day. Sorry. All right. Neither the DSA oh. nor its house organ Jacobin Mag magazine has given any accounting oh. for how a figure whom they hailed as a key ally in the fight for union democracy has turned out to be a fascist sympathizer. Only in the fact that he also made a deal with Joe fucking Biden. Only if you're calling Joe Biden as fascist as Donald Trump. I hope you are. It doesn't sound like you. it. I just want your vote. Uh, it doesn't sound like it, but 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 
Don't be rude. Don't be rude. Meanwhile, meanwhile, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh. Yeah, we're sorry. We're sorry. Meanwhile, opposition is building among the rank and file at UPS, except they signed a contract and they got nothing for five years. The UPS workers rank and file committee formed last year to oppose the sellout contract has issued statements, strongly worded letters, demanding answers on the layoffs and calling on workers to organize themselves against the layoffs in rebellion against the union bureaucracy. You voted for these guys. In an open letter to Sean O'Brien in April, the committee declared Teamsters officials were deliberately concealing information on the layoffs and demanded the full release of all information that bureaucracy has on where, how, and when the cuts will take place. Seems reasonable. Quote, the reason we're demanding this information is so that the rank and file has access to the critical information it needs to organize a fight against layoffs from below. We have no illusions that you and the rest of the bureaucracy will suddenly see the light and come to our side. You've already given your answer with your stony silence. A statement concluded, we workers have every right to take all action deemed necessary to protect our jobs, regardless or whether you choose to sanction them or not. If you will not fight the layoffs, then get out of the way so that UPS workers can do it ourselves, unquote. And remember that the Teamsters represent a lot more than just UPS. So Sean O'Brien has a lot more to worry about, and he's got a very different set of priorities than the UPS workers that he screwed over last year. Right. Please feel free uh, to help us out and drop us a couple of bucks over there at a couple different ways to do it. Cash app, Patreon, PayPal, Rumble. We even get tips over on Rockfin. Um, Kofi, you see the QR code. You can hold up your cell phone and scan that with your phone app. Hold up the phone, it'll bring up a, a URL, you tap it. There. Not for Greta. Come on, man. If we can save the banks, if then we can save the world. I swear that's gotta be AI. That's gotta be AI. <laughs> he did not really say that. No. He did not really say that. No. 